see how they have these, all these old bloom spikes? This is lavender. So what we're going to do is just trim the them back. The yeah, just cut what looks dead. For 17 years, social studies teacher Martha Kaysen has anchored students through gardening at Gonzalo Garza Independence High School. The school started in 1998 to help students out of sequence or behind on their path to graduation. They helped me get my credits. Teacher was always there beside me to help me whenever I needed it. Not just in work, they'll help me, they'll help me like in anything I needed. It's called Independence High School because this is where kids learn to be independent and they learn to do, they learn to be in charge of their education. Now they still have to meet all the qualifications that every, every other junior and senior in Texas has to, but how they do that, they're responsible for. Five percent of our student population are at risk of dropping out or have dropped out. I teach agriculture science and social studies. I teach a class called Garza Gardens that is a multi-credit class that includes economics and government, which everyone's required in this state to take before they graduate, and principles of agriculture, food, and natural resources, or principles of ag, and horticulture science. What attracts students to dig into Garza Gardens? I've always had a really large interest in gardening and just agriculture in general. And I also thought it would be a good way to just get outside and not have to do the normal day-to-day -day sit around for about eight hours of classroom work. But not because I don't enjoy finishing school, but also because I just really enjoy gardening and hanging out with the animals. Just a hand to hand and you actually see little animals and see what's like the eat food system that's in here like worms, how it helps. It's nice to actually learn all those things. In a way, it's changed the way I think and how I want to pretty much go grocery shopping. Like, altogether, I actually want to be able to one day in the future just stop going to grocery stores in general and be able to raise my own meat, my own vegetables, and not have to worry about where they come from. I just think it's really important as you go through school to really expose yourself to a lot of different things. I've been in horticulture, robotics, I've taken art classes and things like that and I think it's just something you need to do before you go to college is to really know what you want to do and I think being able to expose yourself to all these different types of courses and things like that really helps you understand what you want to do in life and who you are as a person. A lot of the students I get are kinesthetic tactile learners. In other words, they'd rather be outside working than sitting in a desk writing. And I think what it does is it gives them the self-esteem they need, plus they learn some, some skills that are the soft skills for the workplace and for college also, is they learn to work in groups, they learn to respect each other. My team that I have in my first class when I started here, we became a family. They first told us we were going to become a family slowly. And so from there, we became a good team when we became a family. Principal Dr. Linda Webb encourages experimenting, like seed starting and recycled styrofoam. Not a success this time, but maybe next round. And they think outside of the box, but then they're able to adapt it so it goes inside the box. In their gardens, students learn soil science, botany, and horticulture through hands-on connection to growing food. This is the beginning where we start planting little plants and it just starts to grow. So once it starts to get bigger, we'll be able to transplant them out to here. Taking a lesson from Dryland Africa, they built keyhole gardens. And what we did is we lined the entire bed with cardboard, multiple layers, and we made sure that that was nice and moist. And then we started adding some dirt, some sand, more compost, more cardboard. We just continued to layer that until it reaches the level of height that we needed and then you just plant some seeds and you uh, end up having a cage for your compost that's in the center of the keyhole garden that actually allows the compost uh, nutrients to be absorbed throughout the entire garden. In their food forest, Martha teaches fruit tree planting and pruning, including native Mexican plums. It's a delicious community connection since neighbors are welcome to pick fruits warm off the trees. Wildlife loves the garden too, thanks to tree folks donations, including native Mexican buckeye. A big hit for everybody, though, is getting one-on-one -on -one with their pet to lose geese. And we got them when they were two hours old. They were little bitty, bright, chartreuse, yellow-green little critters. And they sat in my classroom in a big dog crate for six weeks. And then they got big. And we used to walk them through the halls, all of this stuff. They were our baby geese. And then they grew up 
And now what they do is, number one, they're very good watch geese. And they also help in their own way to fertilize. They eat grass. And it's a good way to teach kids about animal husbandry without having a horse or a cat. An old-style solar panel erected over their housing still pumps enough energy back into the grid to power two classrooms. Through a Speak Up, Speak Out project, Martha's class saves even more electricity. Speak Up, Speak Out is a civics involvement project, and um, Ms. Kaysen's class has been doing it for a couple years now. And basically what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to pick up a problem in your community and address it and see what the possible solutions are. So as our group, uh, we chose um, electricity in the school as a problem um, because you can never be too efficient with electricity. And so one of the things that we went around and did is we started seeing how long the lights were on, where they were on, um, how much electricity we're using. So in the end, we were able to say, if we could just turn off the lights for an hour or two a day, we were gonna save $800 a year. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but $800 is enough to get two new computers for a classroom just by turning the lights off during lunch. In the herb gardens, rain barrels collect AC condensate. We've always been trying to make an impact on our environment and really set the example for some other schools on what it means to be a green school and how to do it and what are the benefits of becoming a green school. And so what we have there in three different beds is food scraps are collected throughout different classrooms throughout the school. And once the compost decomposes, we use the compost to help add nutrients into the soil, which in turn helps the plants grow further and in a way making better food. So how does Garza impact the future for these students? 85% go on to some kind of form of post-secondary education. Well, Ms. Kaysen has a program that I might get in. It's a USA landscaping program. After I graduate, I'm planning on going to nursing school and working as an ER nurse. If I do make enough money working as an ER nurse, I want to start my own little community garden in another city. So this way, people can have access to fresher food and not have to worry about what kind of byproducts go into it. I worked in several different food banks throughout my entire high school career, and I do hope to contribute to, in the future to help end food famine. I'm actually going to Texas A&M University of Corpus Christi for mechanical engineering. There's a lot of things that have happened in horticulture class that I feel have been very influential on my decision to become a mechanical engineer. I learned so much things throughout this whole time I was here, and it helped me throughout a, a lot that I was going through. So I just always came here, it was peaceful here. So it's like my little escape here. If you have your mind to it, yeah, you can graduate whenever you want.